Hi guys, welcome to lesson 4-4, graphing a function rule. First of all, sorry it's a little bit late, it's my fault. Uh, now, our objective for today is that I can graph equations that represent functions. Our new vocabulary words, we have continuous graph, that is a graph that is unbroken, and we have a discrete graph, which is a graph that is composed of distinct isolated points. All right, our essential understanding, the set of all solutions of an equation forms the equation's graph. A graph may include solutions that do not appear in a table. A real world graph should only show points that make sense in that given situation. So for problem number one, graphing a function rule, the first thing we want to do for any of these is to create a table of values. So I'm looking at this and I see we've got a one half, so I'm gonna go with multiples of two as my x values just to simplify the math for us. So I'm gonna do negative four, negative two, zero, two, and four. I always like to be within a couple numbers of our origin. So negative four times one half minus one is negative three. Negative two times one half minus one is negative two negative 1, 0, and 1. So since this is linear, we can see our pattern. We are simply going uh, up by 1 half every time we go up by 1x. So if we go up 2x's, we're going up 1 for our y. So now we can graph these points. We have a point at negative 4, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. We have a point at negative 2, negative 2. We have a point at 0, negative 1. We have a point at 2, 0, and 4, 1. All right, so what you should do on these is make sure that you draw a nice straight line. all the way to the edges of your graph. Make sure you put arrows on the end of it because we know that line goes off to infinity. All right, uh, letter B. Again, we're gonna start off with our data table. So we're gonna go, again, we have a negative, uh, we have a negative one half this time, so I'm gonna still use the negative four, negative two, zero, two, and four as my five points. Negative four times negative one half is a positive two minus two is zero. Negative two times negative one half is a positive one minus two is negative one. Zero minus two is negative two. And then we have negative three and negative four. So we can go ahead and graph these points. So we have negative four, zero. We have negative two, negative one, zero, negative two, two, negative three, and four, negative four. Again, we draw in our line for these. Goes to the edges of your coordinate plane. It is straight and it has arrows at the end. So now there's two at the bottom I want you to try, and then I'll go over them. So for letter A, create your data table. For this one, we can just do negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Our data points, we have negative seven, negative five, negative three, negative one, and one. So when we graph our, uh, make our graph, we have negative two, negative seven, negative one, negative five, zero, negative three, one, negative one, and two, one. So again, draw your line. Goes to the edges of your coordinate plane and it has arrows on the end, and it should be straight, so use a straight edge. Mrs. Zirzo and I both have a supply of them in our classrooms. All right, so x, y, 
We're going to go, I'm multiplying by one third, so I'm going to go multiples of three for this one. Negative six, negative three, zero, three, six. Now you can use the negative two, negative one, zero, one, two as your points all the time. The only trouble is sometimes we're multiplying by a one third, so we are only, we don't want to have ugly decimals, so I'm multiplying by Sorry. thirds. Okay, so multiply negative six, when we plug that in, we get four, three, two, one, and zero. So we can go ahead and graph those points, negative six, four. We have a point at negative three, positive three, a point at zero, two, point at three, one, and a point at six, zero. And we can draw our straight line, make sure it has arrows on the end. All right, next problem. We have problem number two, graphing a real world function rule. So in this scenario, uh, if the function rule w is equal to 8g plus 700 represents the total weight in pounds of a spa that contains g gallons of water, what is a reasonable graph of the function rule given the capacity of the spa is 250 gallons? What is the weight of the spa when empty? So I've already filled in some of the information. I put a scale on there and I've labeled my graph. So I have gallons on my x-axis, that is my independent variable. I have the weight in pounds on my y-axis, that's the dependent variable. Uh, and I have my scale, 25, 75. So each line is 25. On the x-axis, each line is 300 on my y. So I plug in some data points and I went with 0, 75, 125, and 250. And my weights are 700, 1300, 1700, and 2700. So notice I did not pick any negative numbers. You cannot have negative gallons in a spa or a hot tub, so you cannot, you don't need to go to the negative at all. So my first point is at 700, so it'll be right about there. My sec second point is at 75 and 1300, so that'll be right about there. Your fourth point is at 125 and 1700, so it'll be right about there. Fourth point is at 250 and 2700, so that'll be right there. So for this one, your graph is not gonna go to the negative at all, and you're going to have uh, going, or you're gonna carry it to the edge of the graph. All right, letter B, we have the function C is equal to 12.5 H plus 30, represents the co total cost of renting a truck for H hours. What is a reasonable graph of the function given the daily limit is 12 hours? So I have my hours on my x-axis, my cost on my y-axis, and I can just plug in a couple points here, 0, 2, 4, 8, 10, 12. So we'll have a whole bunch of points on this graph. So we've got 30, 55, 80, 130, 155, and 1. Twelve point five times twelve plus thirty is one eighty. One eighty. All right. So now we need to graph these points on our graph. So we're at zero thirty. We're at two fifty five, which will be right about there. Uh, we've got four and eighty, which will be right about there. Skip up to eight, we got eight and 130, so that'll be right about there. 10 and 155 will be right about there. And 12 and 180. 
which is right there. So this is all that you can have in your uh, the number of hours that you can drive because the limit is 12 hours. Okay, I want you guys to try letters A and B uh, and I will go over them. So uh, same thing, we're gonna just start plugging in points. So I've got 0, 2, 5, 10, and 10. So we'll go with four points here. Uh, 0 is 3.25, 2 is 7.75, 5 is 14.5 and 10 is 25.75. So we're talking about miles driven in a cab and the cost that it's going to be. So it's 2.25 or $2.25 per mile plus 3.25 just to hire the cab. And these are actual taxi rates in the city of Chicago. All right, so you need to start by graphing your points. So you have a point at zero and 3.25, so it'll be just above that three line. These graphs don't need to be absolutely perfect. Uh, two and 7.75, it'll be right about there. Five and 14.50 is gonna be right about there. 10 and 25.75, that'll be uh, right about there. So you can see, All right, and that arrow can go on because you could have the cab driver take you 10, 20, 50, 100 miles, however far they'll drive you. All right, okay, letter B, we have uh, the function representing the distance in miles sound travels after T seconds. Uh, so my scale, I said one to 10 for seconds, and I went in two tenths of, an in, uh, of a mile increments for my Y axis. So we have zero, two, five, eight, 10. So zero seconds means it's zero miles. 0 0.42, 1.05, 1.68, and 2.10. All right, so zero, zero, we start off at our origin. Then we have a point at two and 0.42, so it'll be right about there. We have a point at uh, five and 1.05, so that'll be right about there. We have a point at 8 and 1.68, so that'll be about there, and 10 and 210. So there you go. So we're starting off at our origin, and we are going to infinity. Okay. Problem number three, identifying continuous and discrete graphs. So for letter A, we have the amount of water in a wading pool in gallons depends on the amount of time that it has been filling. Uh, so we have time on our x-axis, the gallons of water on our y-axis. I went by five minute intervals on my x, and I went by 10 gallon intervals on my y. So we start off with T and W, and we've got 0, 0, 5, 15, 20, and 60, and 30 and 90. All right, so I'm gonna just plot these points. We've got 0, 0, 5 and 15, 20 and 60, 30 and 90. Now, are we putting the water into the gal into the pool one uh, or five minute chunks at a time? No, you can have anything between one and five minutes. So this is gonna be a continuous graph because you could have any fraction of minutes uh, and that you can find out how much water has been put into the pool. All right, letter B, we were talking about the cost for baseball tickets in dollars. And that depends on the number of tickets that you bought. So the function is C equals 16N. So N is the number of tickets, C is the cost. So if you bought zero tickets, it's $0. Three tickets, $48. Five tickets will be $80. Eight tickets, $128. 10 tickets, $160. All right, so let's plot these points. We have zero, zero, 
we have 3 and 48. On the scales, I went by 1s and I went by 16s. Uh, let's see, we've got a point at 5 and 80. We have a point at 8 and 128. And we have a point at 10 and 160. Now, can you buy a fraction of a ticket? No, you cannot. So this is going to be a discrete graph where you are only plotting the points that you are using. Marla? Yeah. I'll take it. Okay. Letter A, we have the function C equals 5x plus 15, representing the total cost of a photo session based on X photos bought. So we have X and C. So if you buy zero pictures, it'll cost you $15 because you still went there. Two pictures is $25. Five pictures is $40. Eight pictures, $55. And 10 pictures is $65. So we can go ahead and graph these points. We have zero and 15. We went by uh, tens on each graph, so that'll be right about there. 2 and 25, which is right about there. 5 and 40, which is there. 8 and 55, which is right there. And 10 and 65, it's right there. Now, can you buy a fraction of a picture? You cannot. So this is going to be a discrete graph. Your graph is only going to be points. Okay. Letter B, we have the function W equals 8.25H, representing the wages earned based on the number of hours worked. And that is actually 825 is minimum wage in the state of Illinois. So if you worked zero hours, you get paid zero dollars. If you work 10 hours, you get paid 82.50. 20 hours is 165. 30 hours is 247.50. And 40 hours is 330. Okay. So hours, I went up by fours each line, and in wages, I went up by 35. So uh, this is gonna be a kind of a tough one to, to graph. So I have a point at zero, zero. At uh, 10 and 82 and a half, so we're just gonna say, eh, right about there-ish. Okay, then we've got a point at 20 and 165, so it'll be about there. And we have a point at 30 and 247.50. So that'll be right about there. And 40 and 330 is right there. Okay. Now, I draw drew in the line because you can work any fraction of the hours. You can work you know, an hour, two hours and 15 minutes, depending on uh, how your jo uh, job does it, but it's gonna be continuous because you could have any fraction of hours uh, and get paid for it. Okay, our last problem is problem number four, which is graphing nonlinear uh, function rules. So we need to look at how we graph them. So as all of them, we're gonna use a data table. We're gonna list our points. We have X and Y. So when I plug in, I'm gonna use negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And I plug negative two in for X, negative two cubed is negative eight, plus one is negative seven. So you can continue, use your uh, technology to find these points and now you're gonna graph them. So I have a point at negative two and negative seven, a point at negative one, zero, a point at zero, one, point at one, two, and two, nine. Okay, so the way this graph looks 
is it curves in and then goes straight. Okay. That is a cubed graph. Next up we have an absolute value graph, so I'm going to do my x and y. So we've got negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So when you plug in the absolute value of negative 2 is 2, plus 3 is 5, 4, 3, 4, 5. So when I go ahead and graph these points, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, 4, 0, 3, 1, 4, 2, 5. Now this is an absolute value and it's just an x all by itself, so these are going to be straight lines that go to the end of your graph and they form a V. That is what an absolute value graph looks like. Okay, letter C, we have a quadratic or an x squared graph. So we have x and y and we need points. So we've got negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Plug in your points and you get three, zero, negative one, zero, and three. So I plot those points. We have negative two and three. We have negative one and zero. Zero, negative one. One, zero, and two, three. So an x squared graph is actually going to be curved at the bottom and the lines become steeper. So you can see it comes down, it has a curve, and we're going to do a lot more work with graphing of quadratics in chapter 8 and 9. Alright, so you guys try letters D, E, and F and I will go over them. So we have x and y, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Plug in our points solve them, we have 7, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 9. So negative 2, negative 7, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 2, negative two, positive 7, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 2, and 2, negative 9. Okay, and there is our graph. <clears throat> Letter E, we have the opposite of the absolute value of x minus 1. So we put our points, x and y. We've got negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. When you plug the numbers in, you get negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So we graph those points, 2, negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 2, and 2, negative 3. So again, it's an absolute value graph. So it's going to be a straight line, arrows on the end, and it's opening down. Okay. <clears throat> Letter F, another uh, quadratic. So we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, negative 8, negative 2, 0, negative 2, negative 8. All right, so negative 2, negative 8. Negative 1, negative 2. 0, 0. 1, negative 2. And 2, negative 8. And it's quadratic, so it's going to be bell-shaped. It's going to have a curve. Make sure you have arrows on the end of it. Okay, that is the end of our graphing lesson for today. Make sure you rate your level of understanding of these problems 1 to 4 and make sure that you write a summary. If you have any questions about this lesson 
make sure you list them there so that we can address those in class tomorrow. All right, have a great night, and we will see you on uh, Monday.